So I'm here with Vidya Ravi, Ravi Chandran. Did I say Ravi that Chandran, correctly? That's correct. Great. And you're the, the CEO and uh, founder of Glow Touch. We're here in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. First thing, congratulations on the grand opening today of your newest facility. Tell me a little bit about, about Glow Touch. How old is the company? Um, how big is the company? Uh, tell me about some, where some of your other locations are. I believe you're based in uh, Kentucky, is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Great. My neighboring state, I'm from Ohio, so <laughs> so great to, to hear that. But tell me uh, just briefly, if you could just give me some background about, about Glow Touch, uh, how you founded it, um, and, uh, and kind of an overview of the size and, and scope of the company right now. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Lauren. It's great to be here. Appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. It's a really exciting day for us, uh, opening our near shore facility, a new facility in Santo Domingo. Um, yeah, our company is 20 years old. You know, I'm the founder of the company, started it in 2002. Uh, we have multiple locations. We're about 2,500 employees globally. Uh, we have three sites in India. Our primary location is in Mangalore, uh, Bangalore, and another city called Ma uh, Mysore that came up in the fall of 2021. We have two locations in the U.S., on-prem, and a third uh, hub-and-spoke location. We are headquartered in Louisville, Kentucky, like I said, your neighboring state. Mm -hmm. um, and our other locations are in San, in San Antonio, in Texas, and um, South Florida, in the Miami area. And our um, we have a location in Manila, Metro Manila in the Philippines. And uh, we started our nearshore operations almost two years ago in Santo Domingo, but in another location um, in the city. And this is our new flagship site here in Santo Domingo that we are inaugurating today. Uh, we needed more space to expand and grow the operation. So um, here we are. It's well, that's that's really cool. So, um, what kind of does Glow Touch have a not a niche, but a, a specific industry focus? So I know that in in customer experience outsourcing, there are companies that are very strong in telecom. There are companies that are very strong in retail. Um, is there a specific area where Glow Touch is is, is dominant? Uh, there very much is. We do have clients, like I said, in multiple industries, but primarily where we focus is in the technology sector. Mm -hmm. So the bulk of our clients are technology companies, there are SaaS platform companies, technology platform companies. So uh, a number of our programs globally are all focused on tech support. Uh, there's other elements of customer service, customer care, every, customer experience overall, but our heavy focus tends to be in technical support, and that's all tif all different tiers, you know, tier one, tier two, tier three. So we are a little bit unique, uh, and that's why we call ourselves the Uncommon BPO, in that we have um, support operations, but we also have a development, software mm -hmm. development um, operation that really enhances our support um, teams. So we do custom application development, cloud enablement, cloud services that work very closely with technical support as well. So we are um, quite differentiated from that standpoint. I'll say, yeah, that's a combination of ITO and CXO, and that's something you normally you normally don't see. So let's talk about, we're here in the Dominican Republic, um, one of my favorite countries. Uh, of course, I'm biased, as you know, my daughter, uh, my daughter's from here. Um, but I think it's interesting because in the Caribbean, people think about Jamaica as being kind of one of the dominant contact center delivery locations. They've done extremely well uh, in Jamaica. But then uh, we look at Costa Rica as being the IT outsourcing location. Uh, Mexico and Colombia are also big delivery locations for customer experience. Um, Dominican Republic does have a good reputation in this sector, but it's not dominant. How did you first come to consider the Dominican Republic, um, and what were the things that uh, drove your decision to choose this country as your uh, expansion destination? Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, about five years ago, we did a pretty large strategic planning operation for what our roadmap looked like. And one of the things that we found, you know, obviously that was missing for us that was hindering uh, expansion of client programs and giving clients an opportunity to have more concierge types of service um, that was not onshore, but not necessarily all the way offshore, was that missing component was near shore for us. Mm -hmm. So we undertook an exercise to evaluate multiple locations, and uh, we did shortlist it down to a couple of different locations, Dominican Republic being one of them, 
But what really drove us um, to choosing this location is uh, we found the right leadership team here. Um, we found the people were outstanding, are outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's just been a wonderful experience, even though we're trying to do a lot of this remotely. And during the pandemic, we found that we have very trusted partners on the ground here that were eager, enthusiastic, were able to give us talent, um, access to talent pool, and be able to do this much faster than any other locations could. So uh, we ended up choosing this because um, we really felt like it was a good cultural fit for us, because mm -hmm. we're all about culture at GlowTouch. We wanna make sure that the team that we're bringing on to be part of the GlowTouch family is something that really fits into the overall culture of the organization. And the people have just been outstanding, and I cannot say enough wonderful things about them. Um, and, and just in terms of the infrastructure, uh, you know, this has been really great in terms of finding access to locations, being able to build something out really quickly. They've been very efficient, very quick, and uh, it's just been a great experience for us overall. And we've had a couple of uh, programs that we initially started out with, and we've oh, you know, expanded to multiple clients in this location. And every one of the programs we've been able to bring on quickly, hire efficiently, uh, train up the people uh, in a pretty rapid manner and really be able to deliver some stellar results for our clients. So we feel very good about our decision to come here and we are really excited to continue to expand this location going forward. Great, that was kind of, that leads into my next question, which is um, tell me about the, uh, you mentioned that you guys put together a big strategic plan. Tell me about the growth Pro prospects isn't the right word, but the, the, the direction you as the CEO of GlowTouch, uh, your vision for where you want to take the company, and also, um, it's kind of a different question, but, but then also let's talk about um, the near shore in general, uh, other locations that you think might have potential, um, and then what you think about the growth, the growth prospects for your operations here in, in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, so um, Nearshore is very strategic to our growth, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of BPOs may have already come in um, to that determination a little bit earlier than we did, but we were so, like you said, you know, so tech-focused and focused on services that were being very uh, efficiently delivered out of India, out of the U.S., out of some of our other locations, that Nearshore had not been part of the strategic planning initially, but everything has changed. The mm -hmm. pandemic has changed everything. Um, you know, the customers are looking for things that may not necessarily be what they thought they were looking for mm -hmm. three to five years ago. So the way they view service delivery and customer experience is also changing and evolving. And uh, while offshore has been really great and we see significant growth uh, and expansion happening offshore as well, and onshore has some other challenges in terms of just access to talent pool and not to mention cost and you know some other issues of just physical infrastructure people wanting to work from home right. nearshore has really solved uh, a number of those issues it's a it's a, in a very very niche area but it's something that continues to drive a lot of value to our customers so that's something that we are going to put even more focus in expanding so our goal is to have an additional uh, at least two more locations in other nearshore uh, geographies, and we are continuing to evaluate other nearshore locations. Um, so I would say, uh, if not 2022, definitely in 2023, we may be in one or two other additional nearshore locations. Um, as far as our growth trajectory, um, you know, we have three operations in the U.S., uh, and the rest is probably going to be work from home. But we do see um, in, our, in our strategic plans, we have um, uh, plans to go to Europe uh, to really kind of fill the gap between all the way offshore uh, and onshore and nearshore. So we're, evalu we're doing a, a thorough study of um, European locations um, and also EMEA. So those will be a couple more that we are expecting to add. Uh, to our roster within the next 12 to 24 months. So lots of growth ahead. Great, that's good to hear. So what is your impression of the, um, the availability of talent? Obviously there are smart people uh, everywhere, but then some places have more, not so much smart is not the right word, but maybe um, with the appropriate skill set. Right. Okay. Um, what, what's your assessment of the ability to find the people ready to work with the skill sets that you need, especially because you guys are a tech-focused 
um, uh, outsourcing firm. Um, so even if somebody's doing, um, they're not a software developer, they still need, they need to be technically proficient. They need to have English skills. Um, what's your uh, assessment of the talent pool here in Santo Domingo? Uh, and then also the infrastructure, because that's critical. Because you can you can put in. I've been to places recently where there are some very pro, there's there's promising talent, but the infrastructure isn't there. Uh, or you go into places where there's no fiber connectivity. Right. Um, you know, I spoke uh, uh, yesterday with the head of Indotel, which is the like the FCC of Dominican Republic, and they talked about their strategic plan for connectivity with the island. Um, how have you found that to be as far as, I mean, we're in a big commercial facility, it's a beautiful facility here, um, but tell me what do you see about the infrastructure here and the talent pool? Uh, the infrastructure, one of the things that's, it, it's a pretty significant hallmark for us at Glowtouch is we always overinvest in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we do that out of the gate. Because at the end of the day, um, if you are not able to deliver for your customers all the time consistently, no matter which location you're operating from, then it's just not a good experience. You know, you're not a valued partner for them. They need to be able to put their trust in you. So um, coming to the Dominican Republic, that's what we've done here. Um, mm -hmm. There is availability of infrastructure. It has been great. You know, we've been operating here for a couple of years in a different location. Uh, we've really not had downtimes. We've not had outages. Um, mm -hmm. And that's because we've really invested in those areas. And in a large facility like this, this is something that we are very actively looking at. Our technology team is constantly evaluating. What do we have? What do we need to have for our team to deliver a seamless experience for our clients? Um, so by virtue of making that a focus area, we've been able to deliver consistently globally. Um, so one of the interesting things in the pa during the pandemic was it kind of shows you, you know, the real difference between a commercial investment in commercial infrastructure and, you know, people that are trying to work from home. You know, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, so we did have our sites open for people that didn't really have the right kind of connectivity, but we made it a safe environment that people could come and still operate during the pandemic, and we were able to do it pretty seamlessly. Um, you know, even in other locations in India, we were able to deliver uh, the technology that people require to work out of their homes in a similar manner like they would um, from the offices. So that has been something we've been able to address, and we have not fortunately suffered any adverse effects uh, from a lack of infrastructure or connectivity standpoint. Uh, so that has been really good, and I'm really glad to hear um, your conversation about the, uh, the ministry here continuing to want to expand um, connectivity and just infrastructure because that's critical. That's critical mm -hmm. to the growth of any economy. If you don't really put all the right infra infrastructure in place um, on the front end, it's really going to be difficult to then try to scale later. And obviously there are other large BPOs here and I'm sure they have a pretty strong influential hand in making sure that the island continues to be at the top uh, world-class connectivity standards because that's really critical. Um, as far as talent pool, uh, we've been able to recruit for all kinds of talents. So one of the things that we were a little bit uh, unsure, like you said, Costa Rica tends to be a great hub for engineering talent. You know, there's niche areas where people specialize in certain types of talent pools, or at least that's what you generally hear about. But when we had requirements for engineering talent, so some of our clients um, asked us to see if we could source, you know, nearshore talent. Uh, particularly in the develop, software development area and engineering areas, and I'm delighted to tell you the talent is very much available. You know, it takes a little bit more time to source it because we, as BPOs, tend to have very traditional sourcing channels and mechanisms, uh, but we have found them, and the really great news is they've done such a great job that our clients want to expand our engineering pool uh, in the DR, so we have active um, requisitions from clients and our talent acquisition team is working on bringing in more engineering talent. So, Because it really gives people an opportunity to go two ways. If you're very technically minded, if you have skill sets, then there's an opportunity to come and work on programs that support that or do software development. But if you're really much more interested in customer experience, then you know there's obviously room to grow in those areas. Areas. And sometimes we find that people want to do both mm -hmm. uh, in some of our locations. We have really found that, and people look at you know opportunities to be in two different areas as career progression, 
to be in places where there's cutting edge work happening. So that's really served us quite well. And we're delighted with the, the talent pool that we see here. And you know, hopefully we'll be able to bring some bigger engineering programs here. That's great to hear. Is there anything that you wanted to mention that I may be neglected to, all, to, to ask you? Are there any points that you wanted to, to make or emphasize that I, I maybe um, uh, didn't ask? Um, uh, the one thing that I will emphasize, again, like I said before, is the people. Mm -hmm. um, they have been so dedicated and so committed. You know, we're, we're a smaller BPO in a country where there's, you know, very large names and big names. But the people that have chosen to be here, um, they have a mission. They have a purpose. We're a very mission-driven and purpose-driven company. So mm -hmm. we're very, you know, for us, culture is everything. And to be able to see a group of people that have self-selected themselves into wanting to be here by choice, that's not something that we take for granted. That is something okay. that matters to us a lot. And so when we see people really putting their faith in us, we want to really be able to um, bring back to them the types of opportunities that we know they deserve, uh, both personally from a career and from a career progression standpoint, um, and to give back to our communities because you know these communities are where we're operating. They're giving us a lot, so we're very committed to bringing back and giving back to those communities um, as we continue to grow and operate in these locations. That's great to hear. One last question. I always wondered this. What does Glow Touch mean? Uh, so, uh, we wanted to start a company that had the letters G and T. Okay. My grandparents' names start with G and T. Okay. And they've been obviously, you know, a pretty strong uh, force within our family community. And so, 20 years ago, when we were looking for names, uh, you know, it's hard to find domain names at that time. Uh, the only <laughs> TLDs they had were .com, and right. you know, dot, now you have a lot of different extensions. Um, so we tried different combinations of names that was not taken, and then you know, we found uh, Glow Touch, um, and it, it really means, you know, to us, it means a lot other than the fact that you know, it, it is a reflection in honor of uh, my grandparents. Uh, it really, we like to bring the light wherever we go. Uh, we like to be very high touch, both to our employees, our clients, and to our communities. So I think it's uh, it all came together very beautifully. I, I want to congratulate you on your opening, and I know it's a very special uh, opening. I mean, all all are special, but I know this one in a special way that I know that that um, you work very closely side by side with your your father, um, who I've come to hear a lot about, and so. Um, I want to congratulate you, especially on the added significance of the occasion and of the timing. And so, so just a, a, a heartfelt congratulations from me. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lauren. It's been wonderful talking to you. Appreciate it very of much. Of course. Thank you.